Hey guys, Brandon here from Exotic Diecast, bringing you guys a collection update video. You guys asked for it, and the reason I haven't done it in a while is because I was getting just so many new cars that if I did an update, people would ask for an update just the next week because I got more cars. So I just got all my cars in that I got uh, within the uh, last month. They all came in already. And then I have no more cars on order uh, at the moment. So the collection is pretty much the way it sits for a while. And uh, so yeah, you guys were asking for it, so that's why I haven't done it in a while. So just to do a quick spin around of the collection and we will go in detail of all the cars. These are all the 118s, which I pretty much prioritized my collection to be 118s and got rid of the others. So that's it right there. And we will make our way to the end. Uh, so we will just start down here. So what I want to do here, hopefully I could uh, talk fast and, and cruise through this video. I'll just tell you guys uh, the uh, the type of car, who makes it, and the price. And if it's available on Amazon, I will have the link in the description to where you guys can buy it, which is pretty much the case for most of these anyway. So um, anyway, without further ado, uh, again, these are just the 118s. And I'll show you guys maybe the 124s and everything else just briefly. But uh, yeah, the 118s is uh, pretty much the main part of the collection. So let's just start over here with the uh, Lamborghinis. This here is just a Maisto uh, Gallardo Super Leggero. And uh, again, guys, links in the description to where you guys could buy these if they are on Amazon. Uh, so yeah, I got one of those in orange. Got a Barago slash Maisto Lamborghini Huracan. Got a Barago Maisto combo kind of thing, uh, Lamborghini Aventador, that's pretty new. Got an Auto Art uh, Murcielago uh, SV. LP670-4. I love that car in real life and in that model. It's a matte white. This is like a Kyosho, whatever, however you pronounce it. No opening parts, but a Lamborghini Veneno. Then lurking in the back there is a Motormax uh, Lamborghini Diablo GT. And then a Barago Maisto Lamborghini uh, uh, Reventon. Got a little confused there. But uh, then right there is just another Gallardo Super Leggero, just like the first car right there. Just in this one, it's blacked out, which looks really, really cool. So that's it for all the Lamborghinis there. Take a good look there. Uh, so yeah, that is just two, four, six, eight Lamborghinis there. And then we start off with the Porsche section. Um, so we start off here with the Mini Champs 918 Spider. With the uh, next to that is the Maisto Carrera GT. Then the Spark. Uh, 911 991 GT3 RS, then another Mini Champs 991 GT3, and then two 997 uh, GT3 RS 4.0s. Uh, these are, uh, if I didn't say the brands, that white one is a Mini Champs, and these two here are Baragos or uh, or you know the uh, the whole Barago slash Maisto thing, depending on where you buy it. So I got uh, one in white, one in black, and I customized these two. I painted the wheels gloss black on both of them and I really like the outcome of that because the uh, red brake calipers definitely pop out a little bit more. So yeah, as you can tell, I really love Porsche. Uh, so yeah, I got the Porsche section there and then moving on, got four Mercedes here. Kind of starting to see doubles here. We just have two of the same cars, one in yellow, one in silver, uh, AMG GTs. Then uh, And then these three right here with the red SLS, these are all, uh, uh, let me think, Maisto. So yeah. Again, it's kind of getting confusing with all these cars. And then right here is an SLS Black Series. This is uh, a Mini Champs as well. Love the Black Series. And then that red one there didn't come like that. I painted the wing and the front hood black because someone I know, they have an SLS Final Edition with a carbon fiber front hood. So that kind of looks kind of like it and they have it in red. So that would be kind of fun uh, to uh, duplicate it or as best as I could anyway. Then we have three McLarens here. Just have the... Uh, the TSM 675 LT in silica white. Then we have a TSM, uh, I think, yeah, let me think here. That is uh, True Scale Models or Mini, yeah, True Scale Models, I think. <laughs> and then I made a review on it, so you guys could check that. Then that's a TSM F1 LM. And then that, I think, is another TSM uh, P1 GTR. And then these you guys probably have not seen yet. Uh, I haven't really made videos on all of these. I made videos on some of them. But we kind of go into a little bit of Le Mans history here. I saw a documentary on the 24 Hours of Le Mans when Ferrari beat Ford and got inspired enough to buy quite a few of these. So uh, starting over here, this car finished in third place in the 24 Hours of Le Mans 1966, which was the first year uh, Ford beat Ferrari. 
uh, continuing the four year streak. So that car finished uh, third. And then right here, uh, Miles' car, that one finished second. And the uh, number two car finished first. And these three were part of the famous photo finish of 1966. Uh, so that's kind of cool to have the three of them there. Uh, and then in 1967, this uh, GT40 Mark IV won the 24 Hours of Le Mans. And I wanted to get the 1968 car, but it's kind of, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it's pretty much identical to this number six car, except it's number nine. So I didn't get that one yet. Maybe if I find a good deal, I will. But I have the 1969 winner, which is this GT40 Mark I, as opposed to the Mark IIs. This is uh, the Mark I in the Golf livery. Absolutely beautiful. Cameras, uh, video, and uh, pictures just don't do it justice. So, uh, yeah, 1969 winner of the 24 Hours Le Mans. And then I got uh, Dan Gurney's GT40 Mark II, just for good measure, that race in 1966, along with these uh, Mark IIs as well. And then next to it is a Ford GT um, of a 2004 concept, just because together they look pretty cool. Then we have a Maisto um, Dodge Viper in green. I might trade that for a, a friend's Viper in, uh, in black, or just keep the green, I'm not too sure yet. We have two Corvettes, we have an AutoArt C7 Z06, and then a Maisto C7 Z51, a Maisto 1965 Corvette, uh, I think that's a C2 Stingray. Then we have a Shelby Daytona Coupe, and then we have a Maisto 1968 uh, Camaro Z28. Dodo Meso Pantera, and then back here we have an, uh, an Audi R8 GT made by Maisto. And then a Maisto slash Brago uh, Nissan GTR. And then we start getting into a couple classics here, uh, or we already covered them. But uh, we have a Ferrari, I forgot exactly which one this is, a uh, 250 GT or California or something, not too sure. It's like the one in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, except a darker shade. Then we have a uh, Testarossa 360 California. Um, Let's see, uh, I'm kind of skimming over them. I forgot who makes some of these. I think that's uh, Hot Wheels there. And then Hot Wheels. I'm pretty sure these are all Hot Wheels except with the California. That's Maisto. Then I got these two on their sides to show the customization. I painted the wheels on both of these gloss black and the calipers on that one right there uh, yellow. That is just a Maisto, actually no, Brago, uh, 488 GTB. And then a Maisto slash Brago LaFerrari which is a really great price for what it is. And then we have the, uh, the four big uh, Ferraris here, starting with the uh, F40, the F50, the Enzo, and the LaFerrari. So kind of cool to have these right here. So as you can see, yeah, there's two LaFerraris. This one right here was made by Barago, and this one here by Hot Wheels Elite. Um, and then we start getting into some other Ferraris, kind of, uh, you know, that are not red. But uh, so starting here, we just have another California. And then we have this beautiful 488 GTB that uh, if you guys just saw the recent video I did customizing it, this came in all white with silver wheels and black calipers and we changed that up a little bit. So if you wanna see the customization video, just look at my other videos and you'll find it pretty easily. And I love the way that came out. Then we have a Hot Wheels, uh, two, uh, I'm sorry, thinking GTO. It's a 599 GTO made by Hot Wheels. And then another Hot Wheels right there with the uh, customized uh, F12 Berlinetta. And then a blacked out F50 just for good measure. Then a Hot Wheels Elite 458 Speciale. And then this right here, I am losing my mind. I forgot who made that. Um, uh, it'll come back to me. There's just too many uh, boxed cars. But that is just a 430 Scuderia. If I remember who makes that, I'll say it. Uh, by the end of this video. It's just, from what I remember, it's the only model car I have from that manufacturer. I just completely forgot the name, it left me. But anyway, then we have a BBR F12 TDF. I absolutely love the spec with white and the stripes, and then I don't know if you could tell from the side, black wheels and yellow calipers. I have a full unboxing video and review on that one so you guys can see. Then another BBR Ferrari FXXK. And then for good measure, I have the uh, Hot Wheels 599 XX next to that. So there's kind of like the XX program from Ferrari. Then we have uh, some hypercars here. We have the Pagani Zonda Cinque from Motormax, Pagani Huayra from Motormax, and then that is the Lycan Hypersport. Now we start with the Koenigseggs, which are my favorite cars, model car, and in real life. So we're going to end with these. 
This is just a 118 scale uh, auto art uh, Agera, the first generation kind of Agera with the uh, standard wing. And then these three are front art Koenigseggs. So starting with the right here, this was my first one I got. This is just a uh, Agera S number, let's see here once it focuses, number 90 of a non-limited number, but the uh, serial number is three digits, but this is number 90. This here, I got this one because this is the only Koenigsegg uh, Agera I've seen in real life, and that would be the Agera HH. HH for Hannemeyer Hansen because it is owned by David Hannemeyer Hansen. Um, and this here is limited to 300 cars, and this is number 39 of 300. So very, very cool to have. That's a beautiful model. And then last but not least, and knock on wood, but if I ever had a home fire, the, the number one model car I would save is this one right here. This is a 118 scale Frontier Art Koenigsegg 1 to 1 in silver, only 300 made. And as you can see, this is number 194. And then that is Christian von Koenigsegg's signature. But I forged it, so it's not real. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I got the car without the signature, and then I, uh, I went to a movie premiere, and I knew he was going to be at it. It was Apex, the story of the hypercar in Los Angeles. And I knew he was going to be there, so I took the car, took the Sharpie, and uh, and then I saw him. I asked if he could sign it, and he was more than happy to. So, yeah, never, ever getting uh, rid of that. When they were brand new, they were just under $500, but unfortunately, I did not get it new. I had to get it with a marked-up price on eBay for uh, for $700, and now some of them are trading for about $1,400. So I could sell it for more than what I paid for. But if I'm honest, if someone offered me $3,000 for that model car today, I would not even consider it at all. I would just keep the model. But anyway, with that said, uh, before you guys think I'm absolutely crazy spending this much money on cars, you have to realize that the only ones that go down in value are the ones like the, uh, I don't know, like the Maestos, like the Gallardo. They don't, they don't go up in value. So they're, uh, you could collect a ton of those without uh you know without making it an investment but that's not what these are for but with the really expensive ones like these in the boxes um they only go up in value if not you get what you pay for so i'm not too crazy i don't think putting some of my savings into model cars uh, uh it's kind of a diversification if you would but uh anyway at least that's what i tell myself but you guys were asking for this video so here are all the model cars again all together uh the collection is getting kind of crazy so Kind of have to make some more room for them. But anyway, I'll bring you guys to my room. Uh, the reason they're all in here is because I'm dusting all my shelves. But uh, I'll bring you guys in my room and show you guys my 124s. Alright guys, and here are my 124s. I used to have a lot more, but I'm kind of getting rid of them slowly. Um, yeah, so there is a Pagani Huayra made by Motormax, a Zonda F, uh, F12, I'm sorry, V12 Vantage. Uh, MP4-12C, Lotus Evora SGP Edition, Subaru BRZ, Sesto Lamento, Miura, Gran Turismo, Viper, SLR, Aventador. And then, looking back here, the lighting is pretty horrible. Let me see if I could get my uh, flashlight on my phone here. Um, we just have some 136s in there. Let me see if I could just refocus. Forgive me. There we go. So we just have a F430 back there. And then the R R8 down there, and then in there we just have a uh, SLS, kind of like a racing edition, and then another Aventador, and then the uh, 12C, a race car version of the Maserati MC 12C, or whatever it's called. But anyway, and then some random 136s in there. But that's pretty much the 124 collection. Now another request you guys made was to see all of my boxes because like I said I try to keep as many of the boxes, the original boxes as possible uh, because if someone offered a million dollars for one of my model cars uh, they would definitely want the original box. So although I said I'm not going to sell any of my cars just for value sake I, and just kind of peace of mind I like to keep all of my original boxes. So, uh, so yeah with that here are all the boxes of the more upscale model cars. And then of kind of all the other ones we have, like the Maestow and everything like that, here are all those boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and just step back. So there's the video, guys. Uh, you guys requested it a lot, so here it is. And I'll probably do another one when I get the collection built up with even more cars, but probably won't be down the road. Uh, I kind of spent a little too much money recently, as you guys could see, especially with the uh, Ford section. That's all pretty new. But um, 
Yeah, so that kind of wraps up this video, and before I sign off, I'm probably going to get a lot of crap about the cars. Again, I made this video uh, because I was requested, but some other people that are probably new to the channel are probably going to give me some crap because I got it before. Before you guys say spoiled kid or whatever, uh, just know that two years ago, I didn't have, with all my money combined, I didn't have enough money to buy one uh, nice model car. I'm looking at the 430 Scuderia, for example, it was about $300. Two years ago, uh, when I was 16 years old, all my money combined, I couldn't buy that car. Uh, so, and I can tell you that my parents did not buy it. My parents actually hate this hobby. They, they think it's a waste of money, obviously. Um, so what I ended up doing, because I knew my parents weren't going to buy me anything, so I'm 18 years old now, and I have these model cars, and I don't put everything I have into these model cars. Um, and so I just got working. So before anyone asks, and I'm not saying this to show off or whatever, I get this question a lot, so just to be straightforward with you guys, uh, when I was 17 years old, I started getting into real estate, but I couldn't do it legally yet, and uh, if you guys don't know, I'm in Texas. And in Texas, to be a realtor, you have to be 18 years old and do 180 hours of uh, real estate uh, like classes and everything. So now 17, I did all that, and then I became 18, got into real estate, and, uh, and it's done decent enough to get some model cars. And so the amount of money I'm putting in my model cars is, uh, is not all I have. I'm not dumping my money into this because eventually I would like to get some investment properties. Uh, but every now and then when a, when a closing goes well and I get a nice commission, I like to put a little bit into my hobby because I know that this will come back. And ultimately, my retirement, my, my long-term goal, hopefully 10 years or something, is to own my own car dealership or something like that, like a pre-owned exotic car dealership. And then I get to showcase all of my model cars there or somewhere cool, some cool warehouse with cars uh, in the long term. So, uh, so yeah, not to get too off topic, this is exotic diecast about model cars and all that kind of stuff. But just to answer a couple of questions, that's kind of where I'm at. I think this money that goes into, into the model cars, especially the nice ones, I think that comes back. Um, uh, some of them already have, like as far as like the one-to-one -one or the BBR F12 TDF, I could sell them for more than what I paid for, but not like that. Uh, that's not what I, what I, why I buy these. Just because they're motivating just to look at and whenever I'm kind of feeling burnt out as far as work goes, I just look at the F12 TDF or I just look at the one-to-one -one or any of the other Koenigseggs and I get really motivated. So they're an investment to me and, uh, and you guys get to enjoy them and, uh, and I get a lot of comments every day saying you guys like the video so that means a lot. So anyway, that's a little off topic but I kind of felt like I had to answer those questions. But uh, So yeah, that's a wrap for this video. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.